I thought this would never happen to my BMW Z4, but unfortunately it did. The convertible roof completely stopped working and wouldn't open, close, or even let me upgrade the windows. So let's go back a few weeks and see what steps I took to get it fixed. Hey guys, Simple Car Guy here, and today it's a bit of a sad day for me. I went to shoot a video and I needed to put the roof up completely. And while it was closed and all of a sudden it just stopped, and now nothing happens when I hold the key. I have this blinking light and whenever I press the, the button there, this does not open or do anything. So my roof is stuck. It's basically like half closed, but not all the way. I'm trying to troubleshoot it. And here's what I found so far. All right, so obviously the first thing to do is to scan the car. And after scanning the car, when we go to the roof, module we can go read the codes and we get this a68d micro switch roof shell to close right okay so obviously we have an issue with micro switches it's one of the common issues in this car as well as the hall sensors uh, but to see if it's actually working and what's going on i try to erase it so if you go erase the code go back and read it it's back so obviously it's a permanent code so i'm going to go to the data stream and then i'm going to go to sensors switches and i'm going to do view all and here we're going to go down to roof shell 2 closed right okay so that's the one that's giving us an error okay right here it says no okay so i'm going to leave that right here and now i'm going to lift the shell up a little bit so just like that and here is that switch so what I'm going to do is actually press that switch and then see if this changes as I'm pressing the switch. Let's do it. And there is no change. So that tells me that the switch is bad. Okay. Or the wiring to the switch, which is completely possible. To confirm this, let's go ahead and try the other side of the car. See how when I press this sensor, it actually works okay so that tells me i have to well first of all try to replace the switch or look for wiring that might have been damaged and maybe need to repair the wiring loom or something like that well guys it's been a couple of days and i have ordered the micro switch from my local dealer i didn't want to wait a week or however long it's going to take to order from a website so i just went to the local dealer it was about 70 dollars which is about twice as much as you would pay to get it from i don't know like Amazon or something like that, but hey, it's here. I know it's gonna work. So now it's time to remove the old micro switch from the panel right here, from this middle roof panel. Put the new one in and hopefully it works. So let's give it a try. This probably isn't the best way to do it, but I'm not really sure how else I would raise this up not to have enough space. So I'm using a wheel chuck. So under metal here, where it's like solid structure, not the glass. All right, so here is the micro switch right here at the bottom. We're gonna have to remove that. But first, what I'm gonna do is plug the new one in, just see if it actually responds on my scanner. Okay, so here is the new micro switch. I'm gonna unplug the old one. Okay, and then just plug in the new one. Okay, and now I'm gonna test it. Okay, and that's working, that's awesome. So I feel comfortable ripping the old one out and replacing it. I wonder if I can get the new one in with all this stuff in the way. What I didn't realize at the time, and some of you have surely noticed it already, is that when I tested the switch, I plugged it into the wrong connector. The connector you see here is actually supposed to be connected to the micro switch here, which tells the car whether the roof is stowed or not. Obviously, I did not know or see it at the time, but it had me confused for a while. Oh, that barely reaches, whoa. Once I figured out that the correct plug was more hidden behind the wiring loom, I plugged everything in correctly. Unfortunately, this revealed that the switch might not have been the problem this entire time, but at least now I know how to replace these micro switches in the roof. Now that I have learned that it's not this micro switch, I figured it has to be the wire that connects it, right? Because the switch is brand new. 
So I have traced it down, obviously it goes to this connector, that's where I plugged it in, and I have traced it all the way to here. So looking at these wires right here, this green one and this brown one, these two right here, this is the micro switch that tells uh, the car whether the roof is closed, if, if this panel is closed. Then this one, this brown, this top brown, and the orange one in the back, that's the one that tells the car if it's stowed. So there's two different switches, okay? So I tested all of these wires. I just used the regular multimeter, and that's how I traced them, right? And this one does not have continuity back to that switch over there. So I'm, I've temporarily just uh, got a little wire, and I've connected it right here. All right, so I'm pressing the button now, as you can hear it, hopefully. And then if you look on the scanner, nothing's happening. Take my little wire connected to the green wire I was just showing you. And now I'm using the switch. As you can see, it's switching just with my click. Perfect. So now we just need to put in the wire properly, I guess. Just kind of not easy in that super tight space, but I'll try to figure something out. That turned out to be a little harder than I thought, and I couldn't get any slack in the wire to even attempt soldering anything in place. I decided to cut off the plug and remake the connection all the way up to the area where I knew it would work. First step was to get a couple of wires and solder them to the plug, making sure nothing was touching and then get the connections insulated. I chose to use a couple of layers of shrink tubing which seemed to do the trick quite well. The hardest part was getting the other ends of those two wires soldered to the car's wiring loom. This is not something I have experienced in but I think it turned out just fine. I've added shrink tubing the entire length of my patch wire as well as over the actual connection. Well, at least one of the wires. I'll take care of the green wire later. I was eager to test my work, but first I had to clean it up a little bit with a few zip ties. It's not perfect or permanent yet, but good enough for a test. Yes! Obviously, there's a little bit more work to do. I need to clean up this wire so when I open and close the roof, they don't get broken or caught anywhere or anything like that. So I need to figure out where to put them exactly. Uh, originally, it was behind one of these uh, wiring looms, but that's going to be very difficult to get to. But I'll definitely give it a try. And I'm going to go get some liquid uh, electrical tape and just regular cloth electrical tape and wrap all of this up. So this looks uh, nice and not like this. So yeah, very excited to get all of this cleaned up and start driving the car again. After a quick run to the store, I had what I needed to finish the job. This liquid electrical tape seems like the perfect solution as it remains flexible after curing and should keep everything well insulated and watertight. I applied a few coats of the liquid electrical tape, letting it dry for 5 minutes each time, and in the meantime, hid and secured the remaining wires. All that was left is to wrap the cloth tape around the wires for a more finished look. Some of you may be asking, is there anything that can be done to prevent this? Unfortunately, there isn't much you can do to prevent old wires breaking like this other than keeping your car in an air-conditioned garage and not operating the roof more than needed. You should also check out this video where I show step-by-step -step how to maintain any BMW convertible roof. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've had any issues like this on your convertible car. Like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.